It is the world's greatest aviation mystery. What happened to flight MH370? With Malaysia's cabinet agreeing to a proposal to launch a new search for the plane, here is what we know so far about its disappearance 10 years ago. 130 tiny disturbances. That's what it came down to. 130 microscopic ripples in an ocean of radio data, each one marking the phantom passage of a Boeing 770. I would think that it's going to be very difficult to define what would be credible evidence. There's a lot of evidence that have come out, you know, throughout the years. For years, the world searched the seas for MH370, but Richard Godfrey searched the airwaves. We have new research into MH370 by various analysts, and we have, out of that, research new flight paths and from the flight paths, we have new search areas. This aerospace engineer used a revolutionary technique involving weak signal propagation to do what multi-million dollar search efforts couldn't. Find the plane. The proof he's brought forward is so compelling, it has forced a brand new search. And the details of the plane's final moments are more chilling than anyone ever imagined. The Accidental Discovery On March 8, 2014, a Boeing 777 carrying 239 souls vanished from radar screens. Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 became a ghost, sparking the largest and most expensive aviation search in history. For years, ships combed over 120,000 square kilometers of the Indian Ocean, a search area the size of Pennsylvania, but found nothing. The plane, it seemed, had simply evaporated. The world was left with haunting questions, grieving families, and a handful of scattered debris that washed ashore thousands of miles away, offering no real clues. But not all things are what they seem. The thing nobody tells you is that while the world was looking in the water, the answer was hiding in the air. Enter Richard Godfrey, a retired British aerospace engineer and physicist. Godfrey wasn't part of any official investigation. He was just one man with a powerful computer and an obsession with solving the unsolvable. Many people are crazy about the MH370 mystery, but Godfrey approached it from an angle nobody else had even considered. He believed the plane left behind a different kind of trail, not one of wreckage, but of invisible electronic footprints. He turned his attention to a technology called the Weak Signal Propagation Reporter, or WSPR for short. You can think of WSPR as a global tripwire system run by amateur radio enthusiasts. Thousands of these hams around the world constantly transmit and receive low-power radio signals. These signals, often less than one watt of power, are so faint they can travel for thousands of miles by bouncing off the Earth's ionosphere, creating a massive, invisible net of signals that blankets the entire planet. Godfrey's idea was both simple and brilliant. He theorized that a massive metallic object like a Boeing 777, which is over 200 feet long with a wingspan to match, couldn't fly through this dense web of radio signals without disturbing them. Each time the plane crossed a signal's path, it would act like a rock thrown into a still pond, creating a tiny, temporary anomaly a slight dip in the signal strength, or a shift in its frequency. These disturbances would be logged, timestamped, and stored in the massive publicly available WSPR net database. If he was right, the final flight path of MH370 was waiting to be discovered, hidden within billions of lines of data. It was a needle in a haystack operation of epic proportions. Godfrey analyzed over 200 billion lines of raw WSPR data recorded on the night the plane disappeared. Using sophisticated filtering techniques, he began to hunt for these specific electronic disturbances in the airspace over the Indian Ocean. And then he found them. It wasn't just one or two anomalies, he found approximately 130 of them. 
One by one, these digital breadcrumbs started to form a clear, undeniable line. When he plotted them on a map in chronological order, they formed a flight path. The most chilling part? The path began exactly where Malaysian military radar had last seen the plane before it made its mysterious turn back over the Malaysian peninsula and headed south. The WSPR data picked up the trail where the entire world had lost it. This wasn't a vague get. It was a precise, data-driven track leading deep into the desolate expanse of the southern Indian Ocean. For the first time in over a decade, the ghost flight had a definitive route, a path that was about to reveal a terrifying final destination. But where this new path led was even more shocking than how it was found. The Deliberate Detour The flight path revealed by the WSPR data wasn't just a straight line into oblivion, it was something far more deliberate and, frankly, far more unsettling. The data showed the aircraft curving southwest before making a final, decisive turn to the south, a trajectory that aligned with early suspicions but was now defined with incredible precision. You see, this wasn't the path of a ghost plane flying aimlessly on autopilot after some catastrophic event. The digital footprint suggested a series of controlled, intentional maneuvers. The thing nobody tells you about the official search is that it was largely based on the assumption of an unresponsive crew, a plane flying a straight, predictable course until it ran out of fuel. Godfrey's data tears that theory to shreds. The anomalies indicated that someone was actively flying the plane for hours, guiding it along a very specific route designed to avoid commercial radar in populated areas. It was flown with skill and purpose, deep into one of the most remote and desolate stretches of ocean on the entire planet. One of the most bizarre and disturbing details to emerge from the WSPR track was evidence of a strange holding pattern. At one point along its journey south, the plane appears to have loitered, circling in the sky for a period of time before continuing its journey. Why would a rogue aircraft do this? There are no easy answers, but it points to a pilot who is conscious, in control, and making decisions. This wasn't an accident. This was a plan. This evidence has terrified investigators because it forces them to confront a conclusion they have long tried to avoid, that the disappearance of MH370 was a deliberate act carried out by someone in the cockpit. The careful navigation, the avoidance of radar, and the bizarre holding pattern all point away from mechanical failure and toward human intervention. This changes the entire narrative from a tragic accident to something far darker. Godfrey's data provides a timeline for this chilling journey. Each of the 130 WSPR anomalies could be cross-referenced with the pings from the Inmarsat satellite, which was the only other system that maintained a tenuous connection with the plane. The timestamps aligned almost perfectly, with a margin of just about four minutes, creating an undeniable correlation. This wasn't just a random set of radio disturbances, it was a real-time track of the aircraft's final lonely hours confirming its path with two independent data sources. The WSPR signals intersecting from different amateur radio stations across the globe allowed for the creation of narrow flight corridors only about 20 kilometers or 12 miles wide, a level of accuracy that the wide sweeping arcs of the Inmarsat data could never provide on their own. The path was now clear and it led to one single horrifying point on the map. X marks the spot. Richard Godfrey's WSPR trail didn't just fade away, it came to an abrupt end at a very specific spot in the southern Indian Ocean. For the first time, the mystery had a destination. The coordinates are 29.128 degrees south and 99.934 degrees east. This location is roughly 1,500 kilometers or 930 miles west of Perth, Australia. 
It's a desolate, unforgiving part of the world where the ocean floor plunges to depths of over 4,000 meters or 13,000 feet. It's a place where a secret could easily be kept forever. But the most shocking detail about this location is not just its remoteness, but its proximity to the original search zones. The final resting place identified by Godfrey lies about 200 kilometers or 124 miles just inside a region that was never properly searched. The official underwater search, which cost hundreds of millions of dollars, was called off just shy of this critical area. It's a detail that is as frustrating as it is heartbreaking. It means the world's most advanced search teams were right on the doorstep of finding the plane, but turned back before they reached it. Godfrey's coordinates weren't just a wild guess, they were backed by a mountain of converging evidence. A team at the University of Liverpool performed a complex Bayesian analysis, a statistical method used to calculate probabilities. Their findings were stunning. They concluded there was a 74% probability that the main wreckage of MH370 lies within a small radius right around Godfrey's proposed crash site. Furthermore, oceanographers from the Geomar Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research in Germany ran sophisticated drift simulations. They took the known locations where confirmed MH370 debris, like the Flaperon, had washed ashore in places like Africa and Madagascar. They then worked backward using years of ocean current data to trace the debris back to its point of origin. The vast majority of these simulations pointed directly back to an area centered at 29 degrees south within about 100 kilometers or 62 miles of Godfrey's coordinates. The physical evidence found on distant shores was telling the exact same story as the invisible radio waves. To put the theory to a real-world test, a chartered Boeing 777 was flown along the suspected MH370 route over the Indian Ocean. In a remarkable confirmation of Godfrey's work, WSPR stations recorded clear disturbances exactly where the test plane flew, proving that the system works. The science is sound. The data is consistent. And for over 14 months, as Godfrey has refined his model, his target coordinates have remained stable, pointing to the same small patch of ocean. The evidence is so overwhelming that the search is now back on, but this time, they know exactly where to look. What they don't want you to know. The implications of Richard Godfrey's work are staggering, and this is why his proof is so terrifying to official investigators. It doesn't just solve a mystery, it exposes the potential failures of a multi-million dollar international search effort and points toward a truth that is deeply uncomfortable for everyone involved. For years, the official narrative has been one of uncertainty. But Godfrey's data replaces uncertainty with a chilling degree of confidence. This confidence has led the exploration company Ocean Infinity to sign a new no-fine, no-fee contract with the Malaysian government. They are putting their own money on the line, betting millions that Godfrey is right. They have committed to searching a 15,000 square kilometer box with a hotspot identified by the WSPR analysis right at its center. A private company is willing to risk a fortune because the data is just that good. This raises a massive, unsettling question. If one man working with publicly available data could find this path, why couldn't the multinational investigation teams? Were they looking in the wrong way, or perhaps were they looking for the wrong thing? It challenges the very foundation of the official investigation and forces a re-examination of everything we've been told. And now let's talk about what this all really means down to Earth. For over a decade, we've been told this was a puzzle with too many missing pieces. But what if all the pieces were there just waiting for someone to look at them differently? It makes you wonder, doesn't it? If a breakthrough this massive can come from an outsider, what other key details are we missing?
You see, the official story of a ghost flight on autopilot was always a cleaner, less disturbing explanation. It allowed for the possibility of a tragic but impersonal accident, a story of mechanical failure, something that could be fixed with a new part or a revised checklist. But Godfrey's evidence rips that comfortable narrative apart. It points to a deliberate, meticulously planned event. It suggests a pilot who knew exactly how to use a 250-ton aircraft as a disappearing act, guiding it skillfully into total oblivion. And that is the truth that terrifies investigators. It's not just about finding a plane anymore, it's about confronting an unimaginable breach of trust. This wasn't a machine that failed, it was a human. It opens a Pandora's box of questions they don't want to answer about pilot vetting, about the real security of a locked cockpit, and about whether the entire global aviation system has a fatal flaw. The bottom line is, this changes the game. The new search for MH370 is no longer just a recovery mission to bring closure. It's a forensic investigation to confirm a dark and deliberate act. They aren't just looking for wreckage anymore. They are looking for a motive, buried 13,000 feet below the waves, a truth that has been waiting for over a decade for the world to finally look in the right place. But does it also prove that official narratives can sometimes obscure a more difficult truth? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you want more deep dives into the world's greatest mysteries, make sure to like and subscribe.